Yo, what's going on guys? Hey, I'm gonna bring you the Musket Rapier DPS build. This is a PvE build, not a PvP build. Just wanna make that clear. All right, let's go on over our weapons of choice. So we have the finisher as our artifact and the syncretic musket. Now there is definitely better muskets than this one, but this is just the easiest one to acquire as you can farm this in brimstone right over here. All uh, right, in here, super easy to farm. It's a solo farm, so very easy to pick up. This comes with a tumult and jagged. As your third perk, I put Enchanted. You can put the Power Shot Weapon perk on here as well, or the new Disdain Infliction perk, uh, but there's none of that on the market, so I can't show you that. And for the Rapier here, the Finisher comes with Attacks Against Bleeding Targets deal 15% more damage and Reduce Flourish cooldown by 5%. Absolutely huge, insane amount of damage. Flourish deals an additional 41% base damage perk max stacks, 26% crit chance against targets affected by Tundra Bleed. If this perk's on a weapon, Tundra also inflicts 10% weaken, so just some nice, nice utility. Uh, I would once again put Disdain Infliction here, the new weapon perk where you do more damage to, ble to dot targets. Super strong, definitely would be best for the Rapier here as well. For the gems, I recommend putting in diamonds. Now, if you are hugging more, I would recommend putting opals or int gems here instead. And that is just simply because diamonds require you to be at full HP to get the maximum value. And if your healer kind of sucks, you won't really even have a gem slot at all so just keep that in mind depending on what you're doing you should maybe switch out your gems so opal is generally pretty consistent along with the int gem as well but diamonds is the best for the top damage for our jewelry here just grab whatever amulet you can for the dungeon so divine and healthy are generally really solid with a protection perk here so whatever dungeon you're doing you should grab that protection so right now it is star stone void damage so for n3s i recommend running a void damage amulet Something to note I want to mention is M1 and M2 are a lot easier than M3. So M1 and 2 you can generally get away without even slotting even gems sometimes depending on how, if you're good enough. But for M3 you definitely need gems in the correct gear. M3 is definitely a quite a bit harder level than M2 and 1. For your ring here you want thrust damage, keen awareness and bloodletting are all extremely strong on this. Sadly there is no 6-700 ring that has all three of these perks. So instead, I would recommend grabbing either the Soul Shroud Ring, which drops in Shattered Mountain by farming the enemies up in Mertgard. Up in here, you have to farm this. If you want a good DPS ring that only goes to 700 though, sadly. You can also grab the Syncratic Ring where you farm the musket. So it's like a two for one deal there. The other ring you can farm is called Soul Pollen and it drops from the Garden of Genesis, which is actually the mutation right now. So if you want to grab a good Rapier DPS ring, go farm Genesis. Go farm Genesis and you can get it. It's an ice mutation. And then for our earring, I always recommend Life Loop here. Super strong. It gives you healthy toast, refreshing tilt, and regenerating. This is generally just is extremely good in my opinion, and I really like these perks. Other perks that can be good on your earring are refreshing and empowered. Since you are a DPS, you want empowers up. You want to have more empower on you, but I like regenerating, refreshing tilt, and healthy toast because that just makes you have more self-sustain and if your healer is not good once again this is definitely just a better earring because it allows you to heal a lot more through your mana potions your potions come up faster and regenerating allows you to heal more overall for our heart rune i choose heart rune of detonation you can choose whatever heart rune you want but detonate heart rune is generally pretty good because it increases your damage and you have a nice big aoe now for your armor here i recommend grabbing uh four perks elemental aversion health enchanted warden refreshing are the four best pve perks in the game Enchanted Ward is generally the best PvE perk because it makes it the most tanky. After that, it would be Elemental Aversion and then Health Refreshing in that order. But there's no way you can get all four, so what should you do? Well, when the Dungeon Savage Divide comes up, so the dungeon down here, I recommend doing the Mutated and it actually drops some really good gear. It drops some really good gear, the Azal Crystal Shirts, as you can see here, this is from this, but this drops in light and medium by the way not just heavy I, I just only have the heavy for some reason but this is what you would farm for in there and then for your artifact of choice on your pants i recommend the attuned leather pants here this is just simply because this gives you the most overall stats giving you the most damage in the dungeon this comes with refreshing elemental virgin your third perk would either be a weapon perk or health depending on what you want to do here also for your artifact for your earring i recommend grabbing endless thirst it's really solid it has empowering toast and fortifying toast on you on it so making you a bit more tanky and the third perk i would put is regenerating now if you want to grab endless thirst here you would have to come down to the mutation savage divide once again and kill the final boss he will drop it so you get a lot of good stuff in the savage divide 
But if you want the best artifact for this build, it would be the Elemental Van. Now this only drops, I believe, from the final, only drops on the final boss of the, the Hive of Gorgons, the raid. So I don't think you'll be getting that anytime soon, but that is the ideal artifact to aim for, for this setup. But that is it, like lately end game where endless are super easy to grab. The second the dungeon comes up, you can go in there M1, farm it up and grab it. Not too shabby. Now, if you are wondering how you get higher than 700 gear score, there are three main ways. That is by doing the worm. Trial of the Devourer, harder than the raid, actually, so I recommend avoiding this one the moment until you beat the raid. And then the raid is the other way, or doing the well in Cutlass Keys, getting the little blooms and turning them in at the well. So I know a couple ways to get the well. I have a video about that. But you get 500 weekly by slotting this in right here. And you get about 700 by doing the elite chest run in here. For our attributes here, I recommend 350 intelligence, 200 dexterity, 25 strength, 25 focus, and 50 con. Now, if you are newer to the game, I recommend 100 con. That's simply because it increases your max health by 10%, giving you basically more margin of error since you're going to be getting hit by more things. That's completely fine. So 100 con here is a nice buffer to that. Now, the reason why you get 350 intelligence is the extra ability damage and 200 dexterity for the 10% bonus backstab and headshot, 25 strength for the light attack damage. I have a tune, so this is only 10 extra points. 25 focus for 5% ability cooldown reduction. Just have your stuff up faster. If you are newer, you can definitely drop the points in dex. I wouldn't drop it from intelligence. So it'd be 150 dex then, and then you would have 100 con. That would help you out a bit more, especially since you'll be getting hit with more stuff. And this is with food and everything up. So this is why I generally recommend running. The most important is definitely 350 intelligence, then 150 dex. I didn't mention where you get a tune other pants, by the way, by following the main story quest. So you're just following it through releasing the wilds and you'll grab it. I would put it regenerating. Onto our musket skill tree here, we have power shot, powder burn, and shooter stance. And then our ultimate passive here, dead eye, grants a 15% damage increase to all headshots. If multiple targets are hit with a single musket attack, the next shot within three seconds inflicts a bleed to all targets. The shots through pat dealing an additional 15% weapon damage every five seconds. Just some nice extra damage if you hit a, a collateral. Horn passives to note are definitely marksman here. If you have three consecutive shots hit the same target, reduce all other musket cooldowns by 25%. Absolutely huge for DPS. Shoot more, you get five bullets now instead of three. Way more damage. Uh, power shot here, 190% damage to mobs. And then you get the uh, gain power, increased base damage by 10% for 10 seconds for five seconds. This is huge because this is what you usually use to open to get the additional empower. Then you would use your powder burn here. Flick the burn dealing 15% weapon damage per second for seven seconds. And then ignition thunder shots deal 8% additional base damage if they hit a burning target, which allows you to do 8% more overall damage since it'll be burning from the powder burn. Hustle here, you get a nice haste bonus, but the really important one is tactical reload. Dodging reloads the musket can only trigger once every six seconds. So you want to be making maximum value out of this, allowing you to shoot, reload, and then go use an ability. You have to be reloaded to use any ability, by the way. So this is, comes in really handy. Kick them when they're down, deal 10% more base damage with active slow crowd control status effects, so just more damage. Hitting a target with an active debuff grants empower, increasing your damage by 5% for five seconds. This should either come from your party or your powder burn. We can dead eye increases armor penetration against targets that are not blocking with a shield by 10%. No boss will be blocking. Salt on their wound, deal 10% increased base damage to targets below 30% HP, just more damage. Optimal range, musket shots deal 10% increased base damage to targets 20 meters or further away from the player. Also deals 5% increased base damage to target 50 meters. I don't think you're getting 50 meters in a dungeon, but you can try. Heighten precision, successfully hits with the musket grant stack with 2.5% base damage increase. This effect ends after more than five second passes between shots. So make sure you're keeping up your those damage so you, you can stack this as high as possible. Six stacks is the max. Onto our rapier tree, we're running flurry, flourish and finish, and tondo. Tondo stacks a lot of bleeds. Just you slap this bad boy, you can get a bleed. You apply the first bleed stack to an opponent tondo cooldown reduced by 10%. You only hit one ta target. It's reduced by another 25% and increase the initial hit base damage from tondo by 100% if the target is already inflicted with rapier bleed, which they always will be because of how many times you'll be stacking bleeds. Flourish and finish is what you want to use when you're done using all your bleeds. Does an additional 60% weapon damage starting the enemy and then you have to trigger it again, so like this, to proc all the bleeds. That you have stacked onto your opponent and each tick of tondo from the tondo's bleed reduces the cooldown of this ability by 3.5 percent absolutely massive bloody end finish deals 150 percent rapier bleed damage instead of now only 110 absolutely increasing the overall damage then you have flurry here 
to enter a stance and unleash five quick attacks. So one, two, three, four, five. We have Overwhelm. Each Flurry does 25% more block down. Each hit of Flurry reduces its cooldown by 5%. Each hit of Flurry extends the Rapier Bleed by one second. Huge for damage because that increases Tondo, by the way. Finalize the last hit of Flurry inflicts their, its own bleed, dealing 10% weapon damage for the first 10 seconds. And then the passives deal 5% more base damage to the target with bleeds. Unguard deal 10% more base damage when your target has greater than 50% health. And then Desperation deal 10% more base When your stamina is below 40%, Perfectionist deal 10% more base damage when your health is full. So Synergize as well with the diamond. You need a healer for this one. And then Red Curtains. Critical Strikes reduce all cooldowns by 5%. This is really strong because if you're hitting the boss in the back, you'll always be getting a guaranteed crit every time you hit the boss from the back. So keep that in mind. All right, on to perks. The weapon perks you want for your armor will be Empowering Shot here. Hitting a target with Shooter Stance means the stack of Empower. Increase damage by 4 to 16% for 6 seconds. Effect is remo removed when Shooter Stance is exited. Max 4 stacks. The Rapier Charm Leeching Fur. You put this on your armor so you have some of your own self sustain. Heal for 10 to 60% of the damage dealt by Flurry and gain 0.5 seconds of invulnerability when you use Flurry. And then the last one is the perk you want for your musket. I couldn't find it on the market. The one for Power Shot. You would want that either on your weapon or your armor once again. For your consumables, I recommend bringing either Dex Food in or your Con Food. The Dex Food is called Banana Pudding or your con food banana parfait here. This is what I recommend bringing in. If you're struggling, just eat the con food. It's worth it. It's fine. Dying when you're dead, you do zero damage. So the con food is definitely worth bringing. Your honing stones tier three and tier twos are just fine. That's all you would really need. And then for your coatings, you deal additional damage against that target. So this is 15% damage against humans, lasts for 40 minutes. So make sure you know what dungeon you're going into so you can bring the correct coatings. And then award potions here, increase damage absorption from loss by 10%. So this works for every type of mob in the game. So make sure you know what enemies you'll be fighting in the dungeon as well. Now, if you're running life loop, you bring mana potions because this gives you 15% base health when you proc it. Health potions and regenerating potions are a must. And then some hearty meals for some extra regen in the dungeon. So you start by going into shooter stance. Re you reload power shot here to get the empower. And then immediately reload powder burn. Aim for the head. Then attack with the rapier. Hit, hit him with another tondo and then into the flourish and finish and then you just repeat if you want to stay on the the musket bar that is completely fine as well that's totally up to you and you can see here my cooldown's already back up the proc flourish there another tondo then you source and finish big damage right there as you see it procs all the bleeds and absolutely one shots them up and you just want to keep doing your rotation like that backing up your bleeds using flourish and finish when you think you have enough bleeds on and procking them all at once. And the way you would once again open with the musket is by going in the shoe sense, popping the power shot here like this, and then immediately reloading into the powder burn, and then just finishing up the shooter stance. If you guys have any questions regarding the build, I'd be happy to answer anything down in the comments below. And with that, I hope you guys did enjoy the video, and have a good day.